and you'll, so you'll, we're going to play through it a couple of times right now. Feel free to join in. It's in the bulletin or in that purple hymnal number at the top, 1074 hymn number.
for our hymn of praise today is a song in the bulletin. The, the words are in the bulletin, Glory to God. Those that want the music notes, that would be ACS, the purple hymnal that we had a few purple hymnals in the narthex. This is little page 12 and 13 in the fr very front of that purple hymnal if you want the notes. It is a bit of a repeat after me song. So if you uh, aren't sure, do I want the notes or not? Just sing along, you'll, you'll catch on. We're gonna sing it uh, twice.
so we could test it, and then I forgot to turn it back on. So, anyhow, welcome to worship. Glad you're here. Uh, thank you to our worship band for leading worship this morning. We're so thankful for their commitment to practice and, and to helping us to worship God in a beautiful way. So thank you to them. Uh, as Sally mentioned, we do have uh, some new songs. And if you are using one of, if you are one of the choir members, obviously, y'all were invited to grab one of the hymnals. Anybody else who wants to grab one of the hymnals is the All Creation Sings hymnals. You're invited to do so, but please be sure to take them back out uh, to the table when you're done. Please remember our youth, to uh, they are still on their mission trip to Chicago. They'll be coming back tomorrow, so please continue to pray for them in their travels and in their experiences. We have our school supply drive that's ongoing. Uh, next week is the last Sunday to bring back supplies. Uh, there are lists back there uh, for all of the different ages, so you can, you can get, if you like getting supplies for kindergarten kids, go, go to town. Uh, but we've got them for high, all the way up through high school, so please uh, help support the school supply drive. Then we will be distributing on August 7th uh, to the neighborhood, so if you want to help with that, please see Sherry Boos as well, from, and we'll be doing that from noon to 2. This week, Marissa will be, uh, you know, she's, she's just going all out. Uh, she's been on the mission trip. She comes back, and then she's going to lead family art camp. So if you are interested in being part of family art camp in the afternoons and evenings, please contact Marissa as well. It's from 3 to 7 on the 27th through the 30th. Just a reminder on our communion distribution that we do have the rails up here and that as you come forward, you are invited to get the elements from the communion assistance, and then if you wish to kneel, you can take the elements over to either rail and kneel and have your prayer time in that and then go from there. It's not required, obviously, but uh, if that's how you would, would like to receive communion, that is an option. We also will have our healing service next week as part of worship, and so just want to remind you all of that. And then I invite our council president, Rich Patterson, up for a temple talk. No, not two sermons today. Oh, go ahead. I'm off. <laughs> <laughs> no. But I will give you a spoiler alert. I'm going to begin my talk with a bit of a biblical reference, as I always think we need grounding there. And you'll hear it again later in the service. There's a big hint. Uh, so pay attention. Anyway. Uh, so from Colossians 2, verses 6 through 8. So when just as you received Christ Jesus as God, continue to live our lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in faith as you were taught, and overwhelming in thankfulness, see to it that no one takes your captive, though hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends upon human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than Christ. Where am I going? Our mission statement, which is on page, I think, eight of the bulletin, if you want to refresh yourself, because I dare anyone to say it, uh, from memory, that is. It's 10 years old, and a lot in this world has happened. So council took it upon themselves to revisit our mission statement. Where are we? Where are we going? Why? What is a mission statement for? A mission statement for churches, for us, allows us to make sure that we stay serving the Lord in the community and in the whole world within the values of our denomination. It basically stands as a measure or a filter for everything that we do. Whatever we choose to do as a congregation, we need to first say, does it work in the intent and purpose of our mission? Is there anything that we're talking about doing that our mission statement says no? That's not what we should do. That's really the point of a mission statement for us. So then we take it to our next one, which is our value state, our vision statement. That is not changing at this point, but I want to tie the two together because the vision statement is not what happens today. A vision statement is where we want to go. What do we aspire to? What goal do we want to set for ourselves that we use the mission statement as a foundation to get to? With all that, I wanted to share that 
through a lot of prayer and introspection and talking and thinking and talking with some of you, here's our new mission statement. Are you ready for it? Serving God by loving others. It struck us in this world in these ever-changing times and our need to focus on why we are here and why we are called that we really need a very simple, straightforward statement that is also dynamic and encompassing of anything and everything God's ask, God asks us to do as a congregation. So I lay that before the congregation today that, that you'll see a change in our mission statement and hopefully in our hearts. Why are we here? Serving God by loving others. Thank you, Rich. I now invite you to stand as you're able as we begin our worship. We gather together in the name in which we live, the name in which we baptize, in the name of the triune God, the one whose voice is upon the waters, whose mercy is poured out upon all people, and who blows through the wilderness, stirring our hearts to serve all creation. Amen. Now for our confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Please take a moment of silence for reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. And now we join in singing our gathering hymn, When We Are Living.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray the prayer of the day. It's not in your bulletin correctly. Please look at the screens. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and you gladly give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us your abundant mercy. Forgive us those things that weigh in our, on our conscience, and give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Reading this morning is from Colossians. Verse 6, beginning at chapter 2, beginning at verse 6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue your lives. Nothing's turned on today. Reading is from Colossians chapter 2, starting with verse 6. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. <laughs> and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him when he forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing, triumphing over them in, in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbath. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. Here ends the reading. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. So we got slightly out of order, so we're going to go back and sing the canticle of praise, the glory to God, which is, uh, will be on the screen, hopefully. <laughs> you can go, go back a couple more. There we go. Perfect. Thank you.
Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask and it will be given you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if a child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The congregation may be seated as I invite forward the kids for the children's message. How are y'all guys? How are you today? I'm much bigger now. You are bigger than I, David. Do you want to sit here? Because I got a I got a storybook. You want to see the How pictures? Old are you? Well, how about you talk about that later, okay? So, did y'all did y'all hear the scripture I just read? It had the Lord's Prayer in it. Do y'all know the Lord's Prayer? No. No? That's okay. So, I'm going to read this storybook. Yes. I'm going to read this storybook and show you the pictures, okay? So, what is that a picture of? Um, uh, a girl and a dad looking at me. Well, it's a little girl and her daddy, yeah, and she's her dad. The little girl's looking up lovingly at her dad. Her dad, what is this thing? A box. A box. It's a toolbox, right? Okay. And it starts off, "Our Father in Heaven." So that's the way the prayer starts off, right? And so then the prayer continues, "Hallowed be Your name," which that's a fancy word to say holy or special. But then what? Are, what are they doing in the picture? What's the dad doing there, Ethan? What's the daddy doing there? Um, he's putting his toolbox in front, and the girl is putting the girl in, right? Yeah, the, the, he's putting his toolbox into the bed of the truck, and the little girl's going to get in. And so, and then the little girl's sitting there smiling. Where do you think they're going to go? Uh, Any ideas? To a restaurant. To a restaurant with his toolbox? I don't know about that. Let's keep, let's keep reading, Okay. They go to the lumber, the hardware store, lumber and supplies. What's that? Well, it's a place where that you can get wood and plants and stuff to help fix your house. And that's our food. And that's food. They must be buying that for their growth, for their that lunch. Say? That says deli. deli. Yep. So that's the deli where you get your food. So then, cat. did I miss anything to read there? No. Okay. Cat. Then a cat. And who is this? A woman. A woman. And she's, she's, she's fingering her necklace that doesn't have anything on it. And then there's the little kitty cat licking himself, cleaning himself. But look out the window. What is that out the window, her, the window of her house? Uh, it looks like a it's, fence. It's a fence, but it's kind of fallen down, isn't it? Yeah. And then as our prayer, it says, your kingdom come. And then we continue reading, and it says, your will be done. And so I think this is that woman's house. Because look, there's the rickety old fence. And it's this little house amidst all of these big buildings That's in the scary. city. Like the dark is scary. You think the dark is scary? It can be. It can be. That's for sure. So let's keep going. 
And then the prayer continues. Your, well, so that, that page we said, your will be done. And it continues, on earth as it is in heaven. Yep. And here, the daddy and the little girl are coming to see the woman, the right? Again. The cat. Yep, the cat's out there and the dandelions. And they're coming. And the, what's the little and girl what, carrying? It looks like it's falling down. Yeah, it does look like it's falling down. What's the little girl carrying? What's that? A leaf puller. A leaf puller, also known as a rake. Yes. A rake is a leaf puller. That's the same thing, just the, the formal name for it. And so then what does this picture show? What are they doing? There's a lot of stuff happening there, it isn't there? It looks like they're building. They're not trying to... The paint... The Joe's painting the thing. Yeah. And, and he... The daddy is fixing some wood for the fence, and they're making it straight, and the, oh. the daddy is mowing her grass. Oh. And he's putting flowers up for they're her. Trying to make the fence not fall down. Yeah, they're making the fence not fall down. And the little girl's painting it to make it look pretty. And look, she found something. It's well, a golden egg. You think it, it does look like a golden egg. You know, actually, that's what I thought it was at first, too, when I first read this. But we'll see later. We'll see what it is later. And then the prayer says, give us this day our daily bread. And they have bread, and they're eating their meals. Yep, she's looking at that thing, that golden egg that she found. And they're throwing some bread to the pigeons, <laughs> and they're just having a nice meal, well, right? Pigeons, and then they do like this, and then they're going to fight over it. You think it. they're going to fight? Maybe they'll share. You never know. No, they'll fight over it. Oh, uh, maybe Next so. Time. Sometimes. Then the prayer continues, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And here this, the lady is trying to pay them for all the work they did, right? And he's saying, no, 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 I don't want it. I, no, you keep it. And what is, the little girl is watching all this, and she's got that golden egg in her hand. It doesn't look like a golden egg. It doesn't look like it. It doesn't it's there, does it? There's a key thing on it. There is a key thing. Yeah. And then the prayer continues, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Look, she's holding it and looking at it. Wondering what it is. And then look, here, she, show it, she gave it back to the lady and saying, I found it here by the fence. And look at the big smile on the lady's face. That's the, the piece that was missing off of her brace, her necklace, right? She's fixing it to her necklace. Isn't that kind of cool? Mm -hmm. And then the lady gave it to the little girl. And our prayer says, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. And the beautiful fence. Yep, and the, it looks good. Yep, there's, and the, the, the thing that was the golden egg was a charm that has the Lord's prayer on it. Can we skip that? Yeah, that's what we just read. Oh, you want to skip it? Sorry. Okay, see that? Then you get to the end. Amen. Amen. So... This, the point of the book and the story with the Lord's Prayer is that when we pray the Lord's Prayer, we live it out by helping others, by going and helping people who can't necessarily do things for themselves, like this woman who couldn't fix that fence, and she was missing the locket, the, the charm on her, bra her necklace. And so the Lord's Prayer helps us remind us to go and help take care of others, right? That's some of the things that we learn about. When we're praying the prayer and really mean it, we live it out. Okay, so let's pray. So fold your hands and bow your heads with me. Good and gracious God, thank you for giving us the Lord's Prayer and all the many other ways that we have to talk with you. We ask that you help us to take it to heart and go forth from here and help others. In your son's name we pray, amen. Okay, y'all can go see Mr. Rich for a lollipop. So, as you heard in our text, today the scripture has the Lord's Prayer included in it, one of the two versions we get. Now, despite our many divisions, one liturgical act and confession has united all Christians for 2,000 years. Every Sunday, virtually every Christian in every country around the world prays the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples our Father who art in heaven. 
Now, Jesus probably did not intend this to be the case, but nonetheless, here we are. This prayer unites us as Christians around the world, across cultures and languages, and it brings us together as we all pray for God's will to be done, among the many other petitions. And when we pray, God answers. Not just the Lord's Prayer, but any prayer. We just have to realize the answer may not be what we expect. It's interesting to me that this is the only time in all four Gospels that the disciples ask Jesus to teach them to pray. So this begs the question, who taught you how to pray? Even though we pray in public, in worship, in our meetings, in other gatherings, in group settings, we still tend to think of prayer as very personal and intimate. Lots of people really are not very comfortable leading a prayer in public. Even though the disciples ask Jesus to teach them, prayer is something you learn by watching others. There's a great country song by Rodney Atkins called Watching You, and it tells the story of how this little boy is watching everything that his dad does and says, and one part goes on to show the little boy praying at night, and the dad asks, asks him after he finishes, where did you learn to pray like that? Because he was talking to God, the, the, the line is, he's talking to God like he's talking to a friend. And the dad asks, where did you learn to pray like that? And the son says, I've been watching you, dad. Ain't that cool? Now, I realize not all of our kids do this, but we still learn a lot about prayer by watching others. When the unnamed disciple asked Jesus to teach all of them about prayer, I doubt that the hope was to learn a technique or how to achieve the proper balance among praise, confession, thanksgiving, and the other components that we have since come to include as parts of our prayers. The disciples had been with Jesus for quite a while now, and they had been watching him like the little boy in the song. They had seen how his prayer life enhanced and helped him, how it re-energized him and did so much more. It seems this disciple wanted to learn more about Jesus' love for God and his intense desire to see God's reign come to realization. This request is the equivalent of saying, show us your heart. Tell us, what is it like to be in communion with God? So if we come to Jesus only to seek information or a pattern to follow for our own prayers, we've hardly realized or experienced all that Christ has to offer. One commentator that I read this week pointed out that the request from the disciple is a simple and straightforward one, but what surprised her was that she had never made that request herself. So I ask you, have you ever made that request? Have you ever asked Jesus to teach you how to pray? Did it ever even cross your mind as an option, something that was even askable, or that your request might give God joy? We know the disciples were devout Jews, and they knew how to pray, but they witnessed something different in Jesus' prayer life. And in that life, he was enhanced, empowered, moved to act. They probably saw something along the lines of intimacy, belonging, trust, peace, a transformative and nourishing closeness with God, fresh vision, renewed perspective, greater strength, and deeper empathy. Wouldn't all of these traits and experiences be wonderful? And wouldn't the disciples see that in Jesus and want to have those as well? So they say, Lord, teach us to pray. Lord, teach us to pray. Teach us to be with God as you are with God. So often we are impatient, self-absorbed, desire something transactional in our prayers. We want quick answers and even quicker gains. 
We know prayer is a natural part of our lives, and it helps improve our relationship with God in unmeasurable ways. Prayer is what we are wired for. It's mercifully ordinary. It's what we do as God's children. All of us are capable to do so, not just a special few, not just the priests and the deacons and the pastors, not just the church council members, not those who have had training. Prayer is for all of us. And all of this is the reason for us to rejoice and also to relax. Jesus invites us to enter into prayer gently and with quiet confidence because prayer is for each of us and we cannot get it wrong. Jesus offers more than an invitation to imitate his practices. His prayer shows us how to imagine some of who God is and how God operates. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus boldly declares, God hears us, God provides for us, God forgives, God protects, and God expects us to be generous to one another. Jesus reminds us that God hears our words, our silences, our groans, and even our incoherent babble. And God is abundantly generous, even still. The outright promise of prayer, the outright promise in this text about prayer, is coming, comes at the end of the lesson. And I want to share a different version than what we heard. And this translation comes from the message. And it says, Don't you think the Father, who conceived you in love, will give the Holy Spirit when you ask Him? So no, mat no matter what formula we use, how we pray, or what we say, what Jesus promises us in this text, in answer to our prayers, is the Holy Spirit. The answer to every prayer is the gift of the Holy Spirit being given to us. When we pray, when we persist, as Jesus tells us to, when we name our longings without fear or compromise, God will answer without fail by giving us God's abundant, indwelling, overflowing self as the answer that we need, no matter what the request is. We get the Holy Spirit. When we pray, God gives us the loving, consoling, healing, transforming, and empowering spirit every time. This gift of God's very own self within us is the answer we need for our every prayer. Because no matter what we pray, no matter what we may be going through, God is with us and we are not alone. So God encourages us, Jesus encourages persistence in our prayer so that we experience this gift of God's self in our times of need and in our offers of gratitude. The text says to be persistent in our request. And as I was thinking about that and struggling with this, this message, with what to say, the Holy Spirit enlightened me and nudged me with an example of persistence. The type of persistence that I think is what Jesus is calling us to in our prayers. And that is that we should be persistent like a dog. We should have the persistence of my dog, Colorado, who enthusiastically runs out the door all over the yard chasing squirrels, birds, airplanes, because he's stupid that way, UPS trucks, whatever it is, he's constantly running, but he consistently comes to the back door to check for me and to want in or to beg me to come out, intently staring with his tail wagging, watching to see me and hoping that I'll do what he wants. Or we should have the persistence of my other dog, Ellie, who although she is persistent in getting out, I'm trying to fight that, but that's not the persistence I'm talking about. Persistence in that when I'm working, sitting with my computer on my lap, she comes and sits next to me and continually stares at me with those big puppy dog eyes, begging me to love on her, to pet her, to stroke her head, all of that. And if I'm able to ignore it, 
She persists. No matter how much I say, no, I need to work, she paws at me, sometimes tickling, sometimes hurting, but she paws at me relentlessly until I cave and pay her some attention. My two dogs offer us great examples of how to be persistent in asking for what we want. Obviously not with a wagging tail or puppy dog eyes, but through love in relationship and in showing our affection. Even still, is the gift of God's Holy Spirit a sufficient response to our prayers? Mentally, we can say yes, but it's hard to persist in prayer and not receive the answers that I'm hoping for. It's hard to accept the Holy Spirit as God's perfect gift when I'd rather receive answers and direction in my life for, in life for me or my loved ones, or healing of infirmities for friends and family and each of y'all. I'd rather receive comfort for the grieving and brokenhearted, cooperation amongst our political leaders, justice for the marginalized. So many things that we would rather receive. I want God to sweep in and fix everything much more then I want God's Spirit to fill me and accompany me so that I can do my part to go out and heal the world, to work toward solving the problems about which I have just prayed. <laughs> Resting in God's yes requires vulnerability and patience and courage, discipline and trust, traits we only really cultivate best in prayer. At times, prayer comes in the words that we say, whether alone, in moments of thanksgiving or desperation. At times, prayer is words we share with others, gathered in the sanctuary or around a hospital bed or a gravesite. At other times, prayer is action and work as we try to live into and even bring about those things which we've prayed. All of this can be praying persistently praying confidently because the God who came in Jesus understands our hurts and our disappointments because God took them on as well. Because God in Jesus not only endured the life we live but died the death that awaits us and was raised again to show us that even death does not have the last word. All things are possible for God. And so we pray with confidence, trusting that if we know how to give good gifts to our own children, how much more will God give us as we embrace God's Holy Spirit? So we pray. We pray because Jesus wants us to. We pray because it's what God's children do. We pray because we yearn and our yearning is precious to God. And we pray because what we need most, whether we recognize it or not, is God's own spirit pouring God's self into us. With words, without words, with laughter or tears, in hope or in despair, our prayers usher in God's spirit, which reminds us that we are not alone in this broken and aching world. Thanks be to God for that answer to prayer. Amen. Now I invite you to stand as you're able as we join in singing our hymn of the day, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. and built up in Christ, we pray for the church, emboldened church leaders to take risks for the sake of the gospel, and equip the baptism to proclaim your extravagant love for the whole world. Hear us as we sing. Rejoicing in the works of your hands, we pray for the natural world. Make rivers and lakes, oceans and all waterways sparkle with your radiance. Protect our water sources, Edwards and Carrizo Springs aquifers, Guadalupe, Comal and San Antonio rivers, our lakes and wells, and strengthen those who defend them. Hear us as we sing. Intercede on behalf of the vulnerable. We pray for the peoples of the world. Inspire all rulers and governing authorities with your justice, opening their ears, minds, and hearts to hear you. Guide the work of legislatures and public officials that they advocate for the well-being of all those with whom they represent. Hear us as we sing. Persistent in prayer, we pray for our neighbors in need. To all who have hunger, give daily bread. To all who have bread, give hunger for justice. Open us to the cries of those who suffer, especially those who are listed in our bulletin and those we name on our hearts. Hear us as we sing. Oh, yeah, no,
abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for this congregation. Bless the prayer and fellowship ministries in this place. Call us together in times of praise and blessing, trouble and sorrow. In your holy name. We also pray for our brothers and sisters at St. Mark Lutheran Church in Atkins, their pastor, Meg, and synodically authorized minister, Mike. Bless them as they grow in their relationship with you while serving their neighbors. Hear us as we sing. Oh, yeah, oh, Senior. Oh, yeah. with Christ in baptism and raised with him to new life, we give thanks for your saints who rest in your eternal presence. Join our voices with theirs as we sing of your great glory. Hear us as we sing. Oh, yeah, oh, Senior. Oh, yeah. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also. I invite you to share God's peace with those around you, to text those who aren't here, and involve and, and engage in the live chat. As we hear our offering, I invite you to listen to the music and uh, ponder the ways that God's Spirit has been involved in your life.
Please stand as you're able as we join in singing our offertory, Take My Life That I May Be. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. No, sorry, no hymn. We're just praising their name. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, using whichever version is in your heart. Our Father, These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come taste and see that the Lord is good. Whoever you are or wherever you are in your spiritual journey, you are welcome in this place. You are welcome at God's table, at this feast that has no end where there is room for everyone. Beloved of God, come and be fed. I invite you to be seated for those of you who are using the individual packets. You can open those, hearing these words from me or saying them to one another, the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For those of you who do not receive communion, receive the blessing of Jesus Christ, the great healer of us all. May you know the fullness of his love, feel the power of God's grace, and hear the invitation to serve your neighbor in need. Otherwise, the ushers will invite you forward as we sing.
Please stand as you're able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, through, through this, this meal, meal you have, have bandaged, bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now remember, wherever it is that you go this week and whatever it is that you do, God has called us forth from the dust of the earth. You are what God has created you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen and holy as, belo chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. And now we join in singing our sending hymn, Blessings on the Road. If any kids want to come do the rhythm instruments, y'all are invited to come. Well, not just kids. Anybody, if you want a rhythm instrument, come and grab one.
go in peace and share the love of Christ. Thanks be to God, and we will.